In part two of the interview, Riggs and I discuss the balance at each town hall level, as well as CWL and specifically the Premier League. Once again, no background attacks, but pop in the earbuds and listen to it podcast style. Part three will also be uploaded. Let's uh, transition here um, into some of the uh, kind of game related topics I want to get to. And the first of that being the balance of clan wars. And that's something I like to talk about with uh, all the experts I have on the channel. So we have Town Hall 9, Town Hall 10, and Town Hall 11 being the main uh, Town Hall levels we see in competitive clan wars, CWL and other leagues as well. So I guess we can start with Town Hall 9. You know, it typically makes up the majority of the Town Hall levels, even in the Invite League. It's kind of the foundation of a war, um, especially as you get to the lower level that's, leagues. That's, that's the bread and butter right there. Mm -hmm. So how do you feel the balance is? Oh, you know, we're seeing most clans being able to clear the nines at, you know, about a 60% hit rate. Tell me if I'm wrong in the numbers. I, I very well might be. No, no, that, no that, that's definitely accurate. I mean, starting out, I, I mean, at least an invite, it was well below that. I think it was barely over 50%. Uh, but to answer as far as balancing, it's still, Town Hall 9 is still very viable. I mean, it seems in the last four or five updates, every time there's an update, the first thing people start screaming is, oh, Town Hall 9's ripped, Town Hall 9's dead, you know, <laughs> oh, giant bombs got nerfed, right. you, know, you know, you just hog everything. It doesn't work, okay? Uh, town Hall 9 is still very viable, it's still a very crucial Town Hall on that map, you know, and people always say that, you know, Town Hall 9 um, can't win you a lot of wars, but it can lose you a lot of wars. And you can have a big advantage, uh, especially when you're getting something like scouts, you know, going in fresh. And everything kind of links together uh, between Town Hall 9, Town Hall 10, Town Hall 11, getting something like those scouts. Uh, for your Town Hall 10s, hitting a 10 fresh is one of the most difficult things in the game getting ahead of ourselves but as far as balancing i would say it still is balanced you know until it's to the point to where town hall eight is where you can pretty much pretty much triple well over 80 percent even 90 percent uh it's not there it's not happening you know even you know the the best town hall nines you know are very rarely tripling every single attack it's not happening and we still see plenty of fails you know, doing the league recaps in Premier, we still see a lot of Town Hall 9s not getting cleared where the 10s have to dip yeah, down. Absolutely. So as far as balance, I would still say it is still balanced to this day. You know, I agree with what you're saying. A few things I want to um, add on to that because I think that was a very good analysis. It's interesting because we're still seeing if your Town Hall 9s um, straight up against the enemy's Town Hall 9s, if they use all their attacks, they can clear the Town Hall 9s. Pretty much any clan can do that. Um, that's having a 50% hit rate because every you know base gets two attacks. If they clear the opponent's Town Hall 9s, 50% hit rate. Any clan can do that. So it's an interesting question. Is that still balance? And I think, yes, it definitely is balance. But the lower Town Hall levels are meant to be easier to three stars straight across the board, then Town Hall 10s, and then going up to Town Hall 11s being the hardest. It should be kind of a pyramid of difficulty because um, that's how it works nicely in the multi-Town multi Hall level um, wars where you have Town Hall 9s, Town Hall 10s, Town Hall 11s. The lowest needs to be the easiest in order for everything to work out. So. When you look at a war in like CWL, it comes down to the scouts. It's not a matter of if the Town Hall 9s are going to be cleared. It's a matter of how many scouts are there going to be. And also, does it get to the point where we're better off using six attacks for scouts and using two Town Hall 10 attacks to dip down and three-star these two tough Town Hall 9 bases that we can't get? So it brings in a whole other level of strategy, which is how do you balance... Um, the limited amount of scouts you have on Town Hall 10s with the uh, the ability to use Town Hall 10 hits to dip. So to your point, I think it's still very balanced because we're seeing clans um, 
have varying amount of scouts, which really is, like you said, not going to win them the war, but the scouts definitely can prevent a clan uh, from losing the war, if that makes sense. Well, yeah, and not only not only getting scouts, but not having to have your your losing Town Hall 10 attacks to dip down on those nines. So like I said, everything kind of links together. And I, I think that alone, it comes to remember, this is a strategy game. And that is what is part of the strategy. You know, obviously, it wouldn't be fun if everybody, you know, tripled that, you know, just tripled everybody. I mean, how much fun would that be? Right. Yeah. So it comes into the strategy behind it. As far as how each clan, you know, each clan works a little bit differently. Uh, but I'd still say there's always going to be, well, I wouldn't, shouldn't say always, but very often there's always that one town hall nine or those two town hall nines that the nines just can't figure out. They just cannot get it where it could take, you know, two, three, four hits where you say, whoa, hang on, let's just go ahead and dip it, get it out of the way. You know, I'd still say that it is balanced. What well, wouldn't be balanced to me is like you said, if every single nine, uh, you know, you had, you know, six town hall nines, uh, all, you know, all get six packs and then, okay, that's it. All the nines are done. You know, it's definitely, it's not there. We hear about stories of that, but it's, it's, it, it's a relic, you know, right, it doesn't, it's, not it's not, it's not the norm. Uh, there's still a lot of strategy, a lot of planning involved and, you know, the, the defense also, uh, defense always lacks behind offense. And since it's been a little bit since we've had an update, I think the new Town Hall 9s, how they're how base builders are designing Town Hall 9s, um, they're getting much more difficult than they were just, say, a few months ago. So it's kind of caught up. And, you know, having having that hit rate, I think, is where Town Hall 9 should be. Yeah, I think that's exactly right. You have the base building following the attack meta, whatever, whenever an attack gets really good the bases start to change to defend against it, and it kind of self-regulates to a certain extent. How do you feel ground air? is? Are hogs too powerful? I'm starting to think hogs are, you know, they're used a lot in the wars I see. Are you still seeing a lot of Laloon, witches, dragons, other variations, or are hogs kind of taking over at Town Hall 9? I would say, I wouldn't say hogs are taking over. I mean, there's still, there are still, you know, there's many ways to defend against them. And I mean, sometimes to defend against a hog is having a difficult kill squad. I mean, having a difficult funnel, uh, you know, so your kill squad, you know, goes out of whack, you know, things like that. Right. That's why Talent 9, these bases look so unique every single time, uh, you know, when the war goes live, they just get funkier and funkier. Um, but I, I mean, I would, I mean, I would disagree, especially on a fresh hit when you don't know where the Tesla farms are, uh, you don't know where the bombs are, you don't know what's in the CC. Uh, once, once you've done that fresh, you know, once you've done that fresh hit and say it was a fail, I think it could be easier to clean up with something like a hog attack. Um, but at least in fortune steel and from Mont lava, I would say the majority of us, um, do prefer air, whether that be, you know, Lalo, um, you know, different variations of Lalo, whether it's kill squad, mm -hmm. Sui hero, Lalo, uh, dragon attacks, you know, I'm, I'm still pushing those drags. And having a lot of success in the new meta with dragon attacks, different variations of dragon attacks. Uh, and of course, you know, you're going to have your ground guys. But I mean, I've seen a lot of people just say, OK, I'm just going to spam 40 hogs on this base and it's GG. And it ends up in a fail. You know, they got right. five defenses left in the corner. So I, I don't know. At least we're speaking for myself and, you know, for, you know, my own clan or our own clan. I wouldn't say they're overpowering, no. Yeah, I, I, I think that's a good point you make. And I'm, I think in One Hive Genesis, I tend to see, you know, what's working for my clan. And that's probably a little bit more hogs than a lot of clans because we see other clans using different stuff like Laloon and um, those air attacks on our own bases. Right. So I think every clan kind of has their own preference a little bit. Um, and there's definitely a lot of options. So I think, yeah, the verdict is Town Hall 9 is in a pretty good place. It's where it should be for that bottom foundation town hall level um, to kind of be the the majority of, or at least the most represented town hall in these wars. It's in a good spot uh, for now. So uh, that's at, real oh, quick. And at the end of, and, at, and at the end of the day, it's just fun. I mean, I don't know. Maybe that's because where I really started to sink my teeth into the war community, like I mentioned earlier, 
that's like the bread and butter right there. Mm -hmm. Town online to me is just a lot of fun because it is fun getting that three star and it's, you know, easier, you know, to get a three star, uh, you know, three star in a town hall nine versus a town hall 10 or town hall 11. Come on. But it's just, it's just fun. You know, you can still plan a fun attack. You know, the bases are crazy. There's still a lot of strategy involved. And yeah, I just, I don't know. I, I just like it. I'll just leave it at that. Yeah. Yeah. I think part of it is it's not like, you know, it's the end of the world. If you fail, there's other people that can clean it up. So there's a little bit less right. pressure than the town hall tens. And you have just, um, there's a lot of them going on at the beginning of war. Um, and, and, it, and attack variety too. Sorry, but and the attack variety, all the different attacks you can do to me, like I said, you, at the end of the day, you want to have fun playing this game and knowing that there's, 10 15 you know 20 different attack strategies that you can use right. on certain bases that to me is fun absolutely so town hall 10 now this is one that i have a lot of opinions about as a town hall 10 yeah. um i don't know where to start with this when we have know, in, in in the world of clan of cwl that we're kind of in we have 10 v 11 which is those town hall 10s going up to two star the town hall 11s it's the most efficient use of attacks. It frees up the Town Hall 11s to use their attacks to kind of dip down and crush those Town Hall 10s. So we have the 10v11. Then we also have the 10v10 trying to three-star some of the bottom, typically the lower level bases, uh, but also all over the map, the maxed bases sometimes as well, trying to get some of those 10v10 three-stars uh, to add to the star count. So Town Hall 10, what are your just general thoughts 10v11 or 10v10 how do you feel about town hall 10 right now i don't even know where to begin honestly <laughs> town hall 10 oh town hall 10 it's i will say no should i say it's fun it is fun but no i don't want to say but it it is fun however it takes a lot of time a lot of energy yeah. You don't really have those spammy, spammier attacks that you can often use at Town Hall 9. And in some cases, that Town Hall 11s will use a more spammy attack, dipping down on a 10. There's so much strategy involved, and the bases are just insane. And I mean, all you have to do is look at the hit rate. Look at the hit rate. I mean, in CWL, and so that's in CWL Invite, CWL Premier, Rising, uh, Light you know, these top echelon, you know, you know, leagues in, you know, champions war league, uh, look at the hit rates. I mean, sub 20% hit rate. Think about that. Mm -hmm. Uh, sub 20% that, I mean, it's, it's crazy. And, uh, I mean, we are still seeing a little bit more 10 V tens that we would see say six months ago, or maybe even four or five months ago when things like hogs got a buff and, you know, Loon's got a little buff, you know, a while back, uh, things like that. But it's, like I said, I don't even know where to say. It's very, very, very challenging and very, very difficult. I will say this, though. There's no better feeling in this game than getting something like a 10 v 10 3 star in a league war. Right. That right there is, I mean, you've had, I know you've done it. Mm -hmm. um you know i've done it you know a, a, a few times uh but it's so i mean the feeling is absolutely amazing and you do feel like that hard work you put in playing these attacks spending countless hours on voice sketching all that good stuff it's very difficult but there's nothing more rewarding than something like a 10 v 10 triple to the point to where a 10 v 11 is like oh my you know goodness a 10 v 11 is huge right now in this game oh, since yeah. the 11th at yeah, the up, the absolutely. Tower, the art tower, the cannon. It's the chat just goes. It's viral when someone <laughs> gets a double. It's you know, it's very difficult but very rewarding when you have a successful attack. Right, and in my own clan, I've kind of been the the leader of the ten v eleven. That's been my area of focus, mm -hmm. organizing that, helping plan, and I won't be able to do it much more in the future um, as I get busier and stuff, but. 10 v 11 um it's so it's so psychological because you're going for a two star and something about going for the two star the base is just so threatening at so much higher level um when you're going for a 10 v 10 three star definitely hard 
I'd say harder uh, substantially than a 10v11, even though 10v11 has gotten more difficult. Um, right. But it doesn't have that same psychology of a 10v11 where you're going for the two star. It seems like your troops are dying. Are you going to get that one town hall? The town hall is the only time the town hall matters are in 10v11. I mean, honestly, right. um, unless we're going for like two stars at the end of the war on the tens. But for all intents and purposes, it's the only time it matters um, to get that town hall. So it brings back that kind of weird psychology of it, of trying to get that one building, you know, are these giant bombs going to wreck my bowlers? Is my queen going to go towards the town hall? Um, it's just such a psychological game up there. Especially if it's something like a fresh hit. The biggest question is guessing what the CC is going to be. You right. know, if, it, if it's going to be a hound coming out, a hound loon, you know, the question is, is it a hound loon? Do I send my queen with the, with the kill squad or with the main push? Do I sacrifice her on the side just to pick up, you know, uh, you know, 6% or 7%, you know, with ability, uh, like you said, psychological, how is this, you know, going to pan out? Uh, and I will say from what I've seen, the 11 base building has really, really caught up. Not, not to mention the new defense upgrades that every 11 pretty much has on a, yeah. in a league war right now, fully maxed. And it's, it's, it's very, very difficult. And, you know, and like I said, the base meta has definitely caught up the base builders where they can bait you, where it almost looks like not, not necessarily just a straight up, you know, anti two you know, anti two star layout, but they'll kind of bait you. They'll have the town hall shifted, but the way the funnel set up, like you can't get it's, you know, do I attack from the long side of the town hall, or the short side? And there's just as much planning, if I mean, if not more. And, you know, I commend you 10v11 guys. You know, I'm, I'm not in that squad, mm -hmm. but it is very difficult. Big shout out to all the 10v11 guys in all clans. Um, I commend you guys. It is very, very difficult. And... I mean, especially since the new defense, it was hard before the defenses upgraded mm -hmm. and that it's just that much harder. And, you know, the spells that come into account, there's just so many things, but, um, you know, that's pretty much what I have to say about that. Very, very difficult. Absolutely. And I remember there was a, a brief period of time where dragons became really popular. People were using these dragons to two-star, mm -hmm. and they still are used, but it seemed like overnight the Town Hall 11 bases just changed. Now you have the sweepers right there. You have the seeking air mines by the Town Hall. You have um, just all these anti-dragon defenses, the air defenses now being better protected. All this stuff happened to defend dragons, so it's a... Um, the base building has definitely gone up a notch. Uh, let's see, anything else for Town Hall 10? Um, I guess I would, for 10v10, just to talk about that a, a little bit more, um, 10v10, probably the most difficult thing in the game still. Like you said, nothing better than getting a 10v10 three-star. I think hogs have become definitely a staple at, at taking out these lower level bases. I've seen hogs a lot in one half Genesis. We have miners, of course, they can be used to exploit bases. But honestly, miners are easier to defend against. You have your skellies, you have your weird Inferno Tower locations. I made a Town Hall 10 defensive video actually recently. So I think miners right. are easier to defend against. We're seeing people uh, using hogs and um, using even Laloon dragons. Is that an accurate assessment, do you think, at Town Hall 10? I would say, I would say dragons are definitely a part of this meta. Not only with the base layouts, but more specifically uh, the air defense layouts and uh definitely hogs as well you know i know a lot of i know a lot of people in our clan uh to include myself you know have had you know quite a bit of success um using hogs and they're very you know they're very very powerful it still has to be a specific base layout uh to use them and that's the one thing about town hall 10 is it doesn't have that one attack uh, like say town hall 9 has where overnight, you know, an attack will just wreck bases for about three weeks before the base builders start defending against it. Town Hall 10 still doesn't have like, oh, it's this, you know, this one attack is just going to wreck every Town Hall 10. A lot of people thought it was going to be like that with miners, but that was not the case, mm -hmm. and, which made, which did make me happy. We didn't want to see, you know, a spam yeah. attack return to Town Hall 10, which we saw, you know, I guess we could say back in the day, it's, it's, it, it 
seems like uh, when miners just wrecked everything. But when they added that level three, a lot of people were worried. Is Town Hall 10 rip? Clearly, you know, that's not the case. Very, it's all I, I can say with confidence. Rarely do we see uh, in, in, and I'm not just speaking for my clan, you know, covering an entire league. It's still rare to see a uh, minor attack. You see a minor attack, you're like, oh crap, you know, we have a minor attack here. It's kind of like a big deal. Yeah. But I, I agree completely. One thing. Definitely uh, dragon, dragons and hogs absolutely are. And of course, and of course, Lalo. Yeah. are going to be your Lalo. three main. I, yeah, I'd say that's very accurate. Lalo saw a little bit last war. Um, one thing I want to point out before we move on here is Town Hall 10, it feels like it's that one Town Hall level which is unique in that you give me an attack strategy and I can build a base that can defend against it. There's no way you're going to three-star it with that attack strategy. But then it can be three-star with something else. At Town Hall 9, I feel like no matter how you design the base, you can force an attack strategy on it if you do it right. But at Town Hall 10, you can defend against certain attacks, but the key is trying to defend against all of them at once. And once you try to do that, that's where bases get exploited for certain attack strategies. So I think that's the one unique thing about it that separates it from Town Hall 9. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah, I couldn't agree with you more. And it, and it makes a big difference, you know, the, the, the DPS from your lower town hall, you know, what we consider, you know, tier one, tier two, even tier three, town hall 10. Uh, say someone does a Lalo and they, you know, they end with, you know, three loons, say they get the three star. That would be a fail on, say, a tier four or a tier five, which would be your fully max defense yeah. town hall 10. So that's the other thing. Remember, town hall nines are pretty much all max at this point. You know, they're all right. max heroes, max walls, max defense. You don't have town hall eight defenses, but you know, you're a town hall nine, like you don't have that. Um, at town hall 10, that's where it's a, there's a big difference between that low, the lowest town hall 10 on the map and the high, you know, the heaviest town hall 10 on the map. There's a huge difference, uh, which comes into play with strategy and, you know, base layouts and, and things like that. So it's also, a, you know, one more thing, uh, to take into consideration real quick though one other thing i wanted to add before you know before we continue is the clan castles how much the clan castles have changed at town hall 10 before no matter what your weight was it was hound loon that's it right. if you didn't have hound loon you were going to get you know wrecked by something now because of miners now we're seeing golems in the cc more uh, at the at the lower weight because often miners those level three miners can plow through a light town hall 10 That's town right. moon in the middle and we're also seeing a new i guess defense strategy creep up uh not all the bases but there, you know there's going to be a couple bases at the top which have what we refer to as like a squishy cc in hopes of wrecking a dip from an 11 where you know uh, a witch comes out, you know, a baby drag, a couple of Valks come out to really throw the attack off. Uh, so that's another thing that we're seeing, how much the clan castles have changed in just the last couple months, making Town Hall 10 that much more difficult, which also transitions into how much uh, Town Hall 9 scouts, how big a role they play so you can see that clan castle. That's a great point with this, the clan castles. Uh, we're seeing that changing from just being Hound Loon to those other variations. Um, where does the time go? We're like going over 40 minutes here. It's fine. I can do, uh, I, I, I can, <laughs> I can do maybe two parts. I don't want to upload such a long video, but, um, I'll, I'll probably do two parts. Um, anyway though, uh, just real quick, anything for town hall 11, any kind of sound bite you want to give there. Um, my only thoughts on town hall 11 is I think it's fine. I mean, 11 v 11 is surprisingly, viable because we see town hall 11 bases set up to defend town hall 10 attacks which means when a town hall 11 this is rare but when it does attack a town hall 11 it can exploit some of those weird designs meant to defend two stars and pull off the occasional three star so that's nice it, that's a nice facet of the game and then for the dips which is what you mostly see i think it's it's where it should be it's it's definitely most of the time, it's going to happen, but there are the occasional fails, which uh, add to some of the suspense and the fun of that town hall level. Any any thoughts from you? 
Uh, I mean, I would, I would definitely agree. And that, that was another thing is 11s are not building to defend against a town hall 11. They're building that base to defend a two star attack on their base, which, like you said, given the opportunity, an 11, uh, you know, especially an 11 who has, you know, say done a lot of FCs, had a lot of practice attacking another 11, they can very well uh, exploit an 11. But that's also not a gimme. It's very, very difficult uh, to even pull off an 11-11, even with a spam attack, because there's just so much DPS uh, coming at you with the Eagle artillery. It's still very, very difficult, even with the anti-2 layouts. Uh, but I do think Town Hall 11 is in a good spot as far as that Town Hall. Uh, I think, you know, the, the, the dips are still very viable. Again, when the update, this last update came out, we didn't know. It's like, well, are we going to see start seeing more Lemby 11s? Can these 10s still double these 11s with these new defenses? Uh, but Town 11 still kind of seems to be where it was before as far as, uh, you know, the majority of the time they're dipping on the 10s or the 11, the 11 opportunity that they do get, it's because the 10s couldn't double an 11. So they come in for the Lemby 11 right. three-star attempt. Oft, more often than not, ending in a, in a two star or getting like an 89% one star because of where that town hall is. Um, but I do think it is in a good spot as far as how uh, the league wars are set up. Yeah, definitely agree. One thing before we transition, I want to point out is it's interesting at town hall 10, I'd say for a CWO clan, it's, it's definitely important to have good attackers all around, but if you have to prioritize it's okay to have just a few Town Hall 10 attackers that are really money. They can get those uh, 10v10s and get those 10v11s because by and large, Town Hall 10 is characterized. It's like baseball. You're going to fail most of the time when you get up to bat. You're going to bat, I don't know, 250. That's that's almost good. Uh, 300, really good if you're for a batting average. Same thing kind of with Town Hall 10s. Um, failure is almost expected on most of those attacks. Whereas Town Hall 11, you're expected to be money. You're supposed to get those two dips for three stars. So it's a different psychology because um, one of them, you're just, you're expected to be successful. The other one, you're kind of expected to fail. You bring up a good point. It's something that we've, you know, ch chatted about, you know, multiple times, you know, in, in our clan. And there is a lot of pressure uh, on these 11s. You know, I, I commend them. You know, even though they're dips, you know, they're attacking, you know, a weaker town hall, you know, other than their own. It's it's not a gimme. It's still not a gimme, you know, despite what a lot of people say. I mean, there are still plenty of dip fails. There's uh, there's it's more rare to go 100 percent on your dips than it is to have a, you know, a, a couple fails in a war, like you already said, which adds to the suspense. But. Uh, there's a lot of pressure, uh, you know, you, you pretty much, you don't get that three star as an 11, that could be the war right there. That could be right. that one star that you lose by. Uh, so there's all kinds of pressure for these town hall 11s. My heart definitely goes out to them. You know, I'm not a town hall 11 myself, uh, but I mean, hats off definitely. And it's, it's very, I mean, a lot of pressure. I can only imagine how sweaty my hands would be <laughs> before I hit that attack button, making sure all my check marks are green. But yeah, definitely hats off to the 11s. There's a lot of pressure, especially in these league wars. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's pretty much what I have to say about that. But yeah, shout out to the 11s for sure. Mm -hmm. Huge, huge attacks oftentimes uh, to have a good 11. They can just be money like that. So anyway, a few more topics I want to get to. I might have to be a little quicker through these, um, but I still want to you know, get some good insight from you into these. So we have CWL, which I want to talk about, Champions War League. Um, the Probably the biggest clan war league, competitive clan war league in Clash of Clans right now. We saw people being flat out to Estonia um, for the finals. So definitely become a very big event so you're in you have kind of eyes in both invite and premiere can you give us your basic thoughts on cwl what's the condition of it do you see it um, having uh the longevity in the future continuing to grow 
and to be kind of the pinnacle of competitive Clash of Clans? Uh, I would say absolutely. I mean, there. I mean, so far in Invite, there's been one clan that has dropped out. Uh, there was twenty. Yeah, there's twenty four clans to start, so only one has dropped out so far. Uh, oh no, there's two now. Uh, just yesterday. Um, yeah, just yesterday. So there's been two clans that have dropped out of Invite, and we've had two that have dropped out of Premier. Um, but it's still very, very alive and well. And those clans dropped out, you know, for, for, you know, for different reasons, but I definitely say it's still thriving. Um, and I definitely don't think it's going where, especially, uh, they've made a lot of changes as far as how, um, how much, how big a role leaders play in the CWL now, which wasn't there before. Right. And, you know, how they have, uh, you know, their senior staff, uh, for, um, you know, the admins how they have admins for each for each league now, which wasn't there before. So they're constantly just like anything. No idea starts out perfect, um, you know. And they've learned. And from season one to season two, now we're in season three. It seems like it has constantly continued to get better. And um, yeah, definitely still, definitely still thriving. I mean, look at Rising. There's forty clans uh, that started out in Rising. That is how many applications that they had, um, you know. Oh, well, they had well, well over that, but that, they they accepted forty clans because there was so many clans that wanted to get into, say, the Rising League. So definitely alive and well. Definitely not going anywhere, despite you know what many people think. Even with these other leagues popping up, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of them have died as well. Where you know they tried to make a shot, you know, try to knock out the CWL, it did not work. And it's still here. And, but yeah, to answer your question, definitely alive and well. And it has that longevity. Right. And people say, oh, I've heard CWO is a joke. Um, you know, this clan or whatever disbanded this top clan. I don't buy that because there was so many people in this now. We have four leagues. Um, each of them has, what, 24, some 32 clans. Uh, with in, Within those clans, we have... 40 50 people so it's just it's huge when you think about the amount of people it reaches then you have people watching it on youtube or whatever um so that's a big outreach and there was a period of time where it was there was problems with the administration but i think at the end of the day everyone kind of realized you know this is a game you know let's let's try to just make this run smoothly people don't want to start stressing out about i mean people have enough have not enough stress with their attacks we don't want to stress out about how we run our gaming league. So I think in the end, people kind of sorted it out. People that didn't want to be there left. And I think it's in a good place right now. I, I agree with you. It's going to uh, be there to stay. And we have Invite. We have Premiere. We have, is it Light, then Rising? I think I got that right um, in the order. Well, ri rising spins a little heavier than, if you're going by like like a uh, breakdown yeah uh rising then then light would be you know okay. the, the lightest breakdown yeah gotcha so the one that i'm in in my clan one half genesis is cwl premiere um i know uh you have uh from molten lava in your clan family that's in that and you're this you know the cwl recapper you're putting out these recap and prediction videos pretty much every week on it. So you have a lot of knowledge there. I thought just for a minute or two, we could uh, kind of talk about Premiere and who we think is going to win. I think that's one of the, the biggest questions um, and just what, what the top clans are and how things are looking so far this season. Um, I guess I'll give my... I think Forbidden has been, and you can tell me if you agree or not, has been the best clan, uh, hands down just by their undefeated record and how they've performed every week. Do you agree with that? Oh, absolutely. I mean, right now, uh, well, we're about this upcoming weekend will be the start of week seven. Uh, so, so up, up to this point in time, they are six and oh, the they're forbidden is the only undefeated clan, uh, so far. And they've faced some really, really tough clans. It's not like they, you know, had it, you know, an easy schedule or a gimme schedule or anything like that. And they have, um, I mean, they've just smashed clans left and right. 
And I mean, six and oh, again, out of 32 clans, they're the only one that's undefeated. So you definitely have to, you know, stop and take a look. And then uh, they are part of the fake wargasm family. So just a very, very strong uh, clan family on its own. Mm -hmm. uh, so definitely look out for uh, Forbidden. Another clan that is super, super hot right now is none other than Swarm Synergy. Uh, yeah. They've only had one loss so far on the season. I mean, constantly putting up anywhere from three to five, if not six, 10 v 10 triples in a 410 breakdown, getting, you know, uh, the last two, if not three wars, they've had one 11 v 11. So definitely a hot clan uh, as well. Not to mention you guys either. One Hive Genesis, I'm going to tell you, starting out, no one knew how OHG, you know, how they were going to perform. I know you guys have had struggles in past uh, seasons in CWL. Uh, you guys are also looking very, very strong as well. Uh, but yeah, there's, there's, there's definitely a handful of clans that now that week six has wrapped up going into week seven, edging mm -hmm. closer and closer to the playoffs. Uh, there are clans that have definitely separated themselves from the pack that need to be looked out for. Yeah, the, the clans you mentioned also came to mind. Um, and, you know, one thing to keep in mind is it's not all the attacking. People often look at the stats and say, you know, clans, they've gotten lucky. Clans haven't had good weeks against them. You know, the clans they faced have only scored this many stars as if they're kind of, you know, independent who scores what. But they're attacking their bases. So base building is underrated, um, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. When you see a low star count, especially from a good clan that's put up good stars in the past, you have to think, you know, was it a bad week or was it good bases? And oftentimes it's a combination, but you got to give credit to the bases. Um, these clans that are have good records, 6-0, and 5-1, and 4-2, and two, not just the attacking, but also the base building. Oh, absolutely. I mean, base building, I mean, that's, you know, they, you know, what, is, what is that? What is that saying? Offense wins... What, games I but thing. defense wins yeah but it's the defense yeah defense is what wins the championship so and i mean that is definitely true i mean look at a clan like dark looters uh, before they retired they were known to have some of the most difficult bases the the trash was set up in a certain way you know to screw you over uh you know i mean every little thing even a mini bomb was set on that tile for a reason <laughs> nothing was like okay, I'll just throw this over here. We'll put the lab over here. It's like, no, like even the trash has a place. It's not just the defenses for things like funneling and things like that. So, right. um, yeah, I mean, I, I definitely couldn't agree with you more. Um, but yeah, there's, yeah, there's definitely a few clans, uh, that, that come to mind that uh, again, you know, we have what five more, five more wars to go before four more wars to go before we find out you know, who's making it into the playoffs. So, yeah, I, I would say there's probably 10 clans. We don't have to go over all of them, but I'd say there's probably 10 clans I have my eye on uh, that, you know, it, we, you know, we don't know exactly how it's going to pan out. But there's 10 clans that I'm keeping my eye on for the playoffs. Okay. And I'll, I'll let you uh, talk about more of that in your, uh, your predictions videos and stuff because I, I listen to them as I walk my dog usually. Um, that's awesome yeah i mean they do get they do get kind of long but we cover a lot of information in each one of the matchups so yeah that that's that's nice to hear that concludes part two of the interview in part three we will finally get to those new features uh that we want to see in the game as well as end with some fun questionnaire uh would you rather type uh games so stick around for part three it should be up as soon as part two has been uploaded